that as a family sport of football was like the main sport in the family. Cricket wasn't really a, a thing, like apart from my uncle who played it. Um, and yeah, I think I guess I picked it up pretty pretty well, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of just went with it, and yeah, that was kind of where it all started, to be honest. I always was like set on going to America and playing football in America and doing that. And then weirdly, like, this opportunity came at Gloucester and I kind of thought, yeah, why not? I'll just go with it. Because obviously my brother was signed at the time. So it was kind of a little bit easier. I was kind of found, I kind of found it, it wasn't as daunting. I think I was 18 when I made my debut. And it's like that time when everyone's like, partying, going out and having fun and those sort of things. It wasn't, I couldn't really do it. It wasn't like an option. So I made my debut for my first year. Um, and then I, so I played my first game, first game of the year against Derby at home. And then we had Glamorgan away, second game. Um, and I was playing until I got injured in the warm-up um, and then that kind of ruled me out for most of that year because I had a stress fracture in my back. I was definitely down and like didn't, didn't want to talk to anyone, like kind of just wanted my own space just to like recover and then the second week I thought well like there's nothing I can do about it now like it's happened. I think I've just got to I learned a lot from that time of being injured and especially from the opportunities I had before I was injured to like being up here where everything's good and then boom, you're straight back down there yeah. um, and you're almost starting from scratch again. Okay. I knew that I'd had enough of, of the environment of the of the pressure, of the stress, of, of everything. I knew that I didn't want to play professional cricket anymore. Don't get me wrong, I love playing cricket and I'll, I'll still play cricket for, for whoever, but I think that whole, like, you're on your own kind of way of doing it, do you know what I mean? Like, it was tough. I think that's what mainly pushed me away from it all. It's it, the one thing like with second team cricket, you get a physio and you get one coach most of the time. Whereas if you're in the first team or you're training with the first team, you've got a bowling coach, you've got two batting coaches, you've got a first team coach, you've got an assistant coach, you've got a physio, you've got a sports psych. You've got all of these people who are there to help you. Whereas if you're in the second team, you've just got a physio and a coach. Like, simple. So I think it's definitely improving in terms of the support and I think the only thing that will help it is more the more people who who are like role models almost, like seen as like the international like Ben Stokes is like the biggest one at the minute. Yeah. Like the more people like like that are honest about their experiences and where they've been and what's happened to them, the more, the better it's gonna be, I think, personally. A lot of the work that the PCA do is kind of like behind the scenes. You don't really see a lot of it. You don't really hear all about it. So people are like, oh, what do the PCA do? Whereas actually they're really influential in a lot of cricketers' careers. Like speak, speak up about how you're feeling in terms of if you don't feel like you're playing very well or you're not in a great headspace in terms of your cricket I think it's, it can be such a lonely and tough sport it, uh, it can be like a sport where you feel like you're just on your own um, so I think if you can if you can get to grips with how to cope with that from a younger age I think it will put you in good stead for the rest of your career